Good morning to all of you. Welcome back. Uh, please uh, go to this uh, website mobilefish.com. Those who have gone to this uh, website, please uh, come to the chat box and say yes. Please go to mobilefish.com. There are hash generation services there. Please generate generate hash of your name using SHA. Two, five, six. Generate hash. Hello, Nikhil is there, Nikhil Murli from AC department, Rachita. Yes, sir. Uh, please, uh, go, have you gone to this uh, link, mobilefish.com? Yeah. Yes, sir. Please generate hash of your name. So in this uh, link, there is a brief description given with respect to MD5, SHA1, SHA224 and SHA256. So here just a simple task is to use SHA256 algorithm, which is a cryptographic hash function designed by National Security Agency, NSEA. SHA256 produces a 256-bit hash value okay which is typically given as a hexadecimal number 64 digits long so please generate come here hash generator input you can give some name give your name say i'm giving my name arun kumar and this is the input now you generate hash. So now, in fact, uh, the hash is generated for MD5, SHA, and SHA256 uh, also. This is the hash generated. Like a Prashant R has uh, put in the chat box, I request all of you to put your uh, hash of your name in the chat box quickly.
Sade Kumar, put your uh, SHA256 hash of your name in the chat box. Puja also. Anjan Guru Prasad, please uh, put your uh, hash of your name using that is generated using SHA256 in the chat box. I am getting only two responses. What about others? Puja, Lavanya, Sadev Kumar, Murgesh Naidu, Rachita. Quickly, those who did not generate the hash, please generate the hash and mention your hash value in the chat box. Quickly, only four responses. What about others? Okay, so in this. Uh, those who are not yet gone to this uh, link, please go to mobilefish.com services hash generator. So in this, go back to the input. Arun space Kumar. Just add a hash or say some dollar to this. Generate again the hash. Compare the hash of your name and again hash of your name added with the dollar. Just write in the chart box whether they are one or the same. Yes or no? Yes or no? Please write in your chart box. When you generate hash of your name using 256, you got some hash value. Now for your name, you are adding dollar or any some other special character or even a space. Now compare the hash value that you generated second time. Some answers quickly. Puja is available. Yes, sir. Uh, you got the hash? Hello. Yes, sir. 
uh, you added the dollar to the uh, name and again you generated the hash using sh256 yes sir yes sir i generated uh, and the number is changed sir we didn't got the same is it same or different Pooja? Different, sir. Different. Different, different okay. sir. So please write in your uh, chat box. Uh, it is different. So if it is same, write yes. Otherwise, you can write different or no. Quickly in the chat box. Okay, I hope uh, you understood the difference. So MD5, SHA256, SHA224, this a lot of different uh, algorithm with respect to the generation of hash is concerned and a small change in a character or adding a character as space or a special character in your name has made a change brought a drastic change in the hash value this understanding is important for us to continue the discussion of the blockchain concept come back to this slide understanding sha256 hash this is a hash value generated of a block if a uh, the blockchain is of a bitcoin a bitcoin blockchain has consisting of sender details so receiver details and a number of bitcoins to be transferred for example now this information is the input for the hash algorithm say sha256 and a hash is generated like this just know how we have checked it in the website of mobile face right so a block also has a hash it can be understood as a fingerprint which is unique to each block it identifies a block and all of its contents and it is always unique and just like a fingerprint so once a block is created any change inside the block will cause the hash to change that's very very important right therefore a hash is very useful when you want to detect changes to intersections if the fingerprint of a block changes it does not remain the same block each block has data each block has hash and hash of the previous block therefore remember each block is consisting of data each block is consisting of hash and hash of the previous block consider the example given here where we have a chain of uh, three blocks block one block two block three the first block has no predecessor this is the first block created this is also called as genesis block hence it does not contain the previous block block two contains the hash of the block one block 2 contains the hash of the block 1 you can see here hash of block 1 is 2zv1 so block 2 contains its own hash as well as hash of the previous block so hash of the previous block for block 2 is 2zv1 that's that right similarly hash of the block 2 is 7b2z and this is previous hash for the block 3 this is how we'll be having the block chain <coughs> hence all blocks are containing hashes of previous blocks this is the technique that makes a blockchain so secure right 
Correct? Let's see how it works. Now, think of a situation where attacker thinks of changing the, some contents of uh, data present in the block to correspondingly the hash of the block also changes but block 3 still contains the old hash of block 2 this makes block 3 and all succeeding blocks invalid as they do not have hash of the previous block right <coughs> try to understand this and an cyber attacker can change any block content as he wants no because if he changes the content hash value changes right just now you are seeing that So, if he changes block 2, block 3 and succeeding blocks becomes invalid as they do not have correct hash of the previous block. Right? For him it becomes invalid. Therefore, changing a single block can make, quickly make all the following blocks invalid right invalid proof of work this is a very important concept that uh, you need to understand with respect to the uh, blockchain hashes are an excellent mechanism to prevent tampering but you know these days you are having high speed computers right it can calculate hundreds or thousands of hashes per second so in a matter of few minutes an attacker can tamper a block and then recalculate all the hashes of the other block and uh, make other blocks are also valid as we have shown here we say if an attacker makes a block 2 some changes in block 2 hashes of uh, block 2 and block 3 and succeeding blocks changes now Suppose a set of nodes involved in the blockchain are powerful computers. In a matter of few minutes, an attacker can tamper with a block and then recalculate all hashes of the other blocks to make the blockchain valid again. This is very dangerous situation. Therefore, blockchain concept Blockchain technology brings the concept of proof of work. This is a mechanism which slows down the creation of the new block. Once you allow to create a new block, then quickly you will create the hash of the other blocks and you quickly can make in a matter of few minutes all blocks valid and you can turn your work. Right? So to avoid this, there's a concept brought by the blockchain technology called proof of work. A proof of work is a computational problem that makes certain effort to solve the problem. But the time required to verify the results of the computational problem is very less compared to the effort it takes to solve the computational problem itself. Right? The creating a block may be quick, but solving this uh, puzzle takes time, right? And here you have to understand this uh, uh, problem with an example. In case of a Bitcoin, it takes almost 10 minutes to calculate the required proof of work to add a new block. Suppose a node wants to add a block to the chain, then it has to solve a certain puzzle. To solve a certain puzzle, it takes about 10 minutes. If a hacker would to, would to change the data in block 2, he would need to perform proof of work, which takes 10 minutes, and only then he can change in block 3 and all the succeeding blocks. Right? 
So, so if so if he wants to change in block two, he has to perform proof of work, and only then can make the change in block three and all the succeeding blocks. So, it takes a lot of time here. So, if you want to make any changes, right, then you, there will be a lot of time consumed. This kind of mechanism makes it quite tough to tamper the blocks to blocks. So, even if you tamper with uh, even a single block, you need to recalculate proof of work for all the following blocks. So, if you make changes in the second block, okay, and uh, if you are having 100 blocks in the, in the remaining, so second block, anyway it has to be done genesis block no changes so n minus two blocks you have to make the changes so thus hashing and proof of work mechanism makes a blockchain secure see the mechanism how it brings the security there is one more uh, a model which brings the blockchain a security called a distributed peer-to-peer -peer network model distributed peer-to-peer -peer network model there is one more, this model secures themselves that's by being distributed. So what we have seen is a kind of a, a chain kind of a block, uh, blockchain, right? But here you are seeing at the different architecture, distributed architecture. Instead of using a central entity to manage the chain as in the previous case, case blockchain is just a distributed peer-to-peer -peer network. And everyone is allowed to join there. When someone enters the network, he will get the full copy of the blockchain. Each computer is called a node here. Each computer is called a node. Every node, every node will get the copy of the blockchain. Please understand this. There in the previous case, here in this case, every block is not having the copy of the entire chain. Okay, it's not that uh, it depends on the model. So in this model, it is not having the copy of the entire blockchain. Coming to the distributed model, so here you will be having the every node will be having the copy full copy of the blockchain. Please remember the difference in a distributed peer-to-peer -peer network blockchain, right? A node uh, will be having the full copy of the blockchain, and each computer is called a node. See here. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Distributed peer-to-peer -peer network. Okay. Let us see what happens now in a distributed peer network. When a user creates a new block, this new block is sent to all the users on the network. All the users on the network. Each node need to verify the block to make sure that it has not been altered. It has not been altered. After complete checking, each node adds this block to their own blockchain. Okay, own blockchain. So this is a, the difference. So you can see here, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Four is added, new block is added everywhere. There are four users here. Every user has got a blockchain. So this user, let us say, yeah, user X has got this blockchain. User Y has got this blockchain. User uh, Z has got this blockchain. X, Y, Z, another one, user A has got this blockchain. Every user has got the blockchain. When a new block is created, every user validates that block. Every user validates the block and each node adds this block to their blockchain. All these nodes in the next node creates a consciousness. Consciousness is a, like an agreement. They agree about what blocks are valid and which are not valid. Okay, they will be knowing. They will come to a common agreement. So yes, this block can be added because it is valid block. Nodes in the network will reject blocks that are tampered with. If somebody has tampered, if some changes have been done or tampered, okay, then the uh, nodes will reject the block. So, to successfully tamper with a blockchain, you will need to tamper with all the blocks on the chain, redo the proof of work for each block. 
is it practically possible to tamper all the blocks because if you tamper a one block you have to tamper all blocks and you have to redo the proof of work for each block that concept has been brought in right simply you will not be allowed to create a new block first you have to do proof of work that means a computational problem you have to solve you have to solve some puzzle so in case of bitcoin it takes 10 minutes so first uh, you do redo the proof of work then create the block then for that block create the hash and go to third block and redo the proof of work create the hash that way you have to do for all the nodes in the block uh, in the blockchain so this is at least to take control of uh, the peer to peer network 50% of the nodes uh, how to be worked on okay that's we right to take control of greater than 50% that means 51% is greater than 50% you should have at least 51% of the peer to peer network uh, blocks should be under your control after doing all these your tampered block become accepted by every everyone else this is next to impossible task hence uh, block chains are conceptually secure i will say because these are all the concepts uh, uh what we are talking but practically something may change and we should be able to how the mechanism for to face such problems how blockchain transaction works okay we have to see this so very first you can see here transaction requested broadcast the transaction validate the transaction add blockchain so now in the distributed peer to peer network we said a new block is created and it will be added how that process happens actually how transaction happen some person requests a transaction the transaction could be involved cryptocurrency or some contracts or records or other information okay please be patient because this uh, technology you need to understand you have to read you have to um, go through some case study you have to go through different uh, uh, you know uh, tools like hyperledger ethereum tool then you will completely understand so it takes some time you have to involve in the process of understanding okay some person requests a transaction the transaction could be involved cryptocurrency for example smart contracts for example records or other information for example records so we will be explaining you land record uh, uh, transaction use case so we will be elaborately presenting that so if, for example in this case some land records so registration process for example sub registrar registers the land belonging to some people from the seller to the buyer right so then records may be having certain informations it requires for the transactions so registration of the records requested transaction is broadcasted to a peer to peer network with the help of nodes for example right the network of nodes validate the transaction and users status with the help of known algorithms once the transaction is complete the new block is then added to the existing blockchain transaction after the transaction is completed because before the transaction is completed you cannot add once you add it becomes immutable you cannot change any content of it therefore once the transaction is completed then it is added so the blockchain transaction works in this sequence request for transaction broadcast the transaction validate the transaction then add to the blockchain this is how it happens now uh, let's go to uh, this the point why do we need blockchain so we have seen i think this is the right time to summarize why do we need blockchain because of uh, certain uh, important points the blockchain has become so popular today so banking sectors uses the blockchain different sectors uh, uses the blockchain supply chain management in that you will be using the blockchain i will explain you through different use cases how blockchains are useful this elements for example blockchain is often replicated architecture the chain is still operated by most nodes in the event of a massive attack against the system resilience because the chain is redundant see 
China is redundant, often replicated architecture. Time reduction in the financial industry, blockchain can play a vital role by allowing the quicker settlement of trades assets. Trades, okay, and uh, see that is actually a lengthy process for of verification. Verification is a lengthy process, trade assets. So, in such cases, a verification, settlement, and clearance uh, uh, takes a longer period of time. Once you are having this uh, type of uh, uh, process in place, so we uh, we can uh, assume that records are not changed at any point of time, and uh, a single version of the agreed upon data of the share ledger is available between all stakeholders. Everybody will be having the record, the same record. So that way, time reduction happens during the settlement of uh, some uh, bills. Reliability, blockchain certificates and uh, certificates and verifies the identities of the interested parties. This removes double records, reducing rates and also the transaction. Unchangeable transaction by registering transactions in chronological order, blockchain certifies that unalterability exists. Okay, if any changes happens in a block, a new block is added, or that new hash will be created. So therefore, transactions cannot be changeable. A new transaction can happen, and certifies unalterability of all operations, which means when the new block has been added to the chain of ledgers, it cannot be removed or modified. Okay, that is the nature of the blockchain. This nature of the blockchain can prevent frauds, fraud prevention, concept of shared information and costlessness prevent possible losses due to fraud or in logistics based industries, blockchain as a monitoring mechanism act to reduce cost. Transparency, changes to public domains, changes to public blockchains are publicly viewable to everyone. This offers greater transparency and all transactions are immutable. Collaboration, allow parties to transact directly with each other without the need for mediating third parties. Decentralized, there are standard rules on every node exchanges the blockchain information. This method ensures that all transactions are validated and all valid transactions are added one by one. Therefore, to list, to summarize, blockchains are needed or popular today because of resilience, time reduction, reliability, unchangeable transactions, fraud prevention, security, transparency, collaboration, and decentralized nature. These are the typical characteristics of a blockchain which uh, brings the blockchain technology in the forefront of cyber security. Now we'll go to the blockchain versions. Blockchain versions, blockchain 1.0, blockchain 2.0, blockchain 3.0. These are the different uh, versions. Blockchain 1.0, it is a currency, the implementation of distributed ledger technology, which led to its first and obvious application of cryptocurrencies. This allows financial transactions based on blockchain technology. It is used in currency and payments. Bitcoin is the most prominent example in this segment. Right? So far, up to 2020, Bitcoin or cryptocurrency was not valid in India. Now, the Supreme Court has told it is valid in India also. Up to that, it was a question, right? Question mark. Now, again, since the Supreme Court has told it is a valid one, the law, IT law, right? IT Act, Cyber Law has to learn this and have a different uh, act or section for dealing with the cryptocurrency problems or cases. Now go to blockchain 2.0 smart contracts. So the new concepts of smart contracts, small computer programs that live in the blockchain, they are free computer programs that execute automatically and check conditions defined earlier like 
facilitation, verification, or enforcement is used as a replacement for traditional contract. So, smart contract. What is a smart contract? The, there is a. It's an e-contract. For example, it's an e-contract. You cannot uh, uh, deviate from the contract, similar to the regular contract. But uh, there are free computer programs that execute automatically, and uh, which are designed, which are written. The logic of the programs are written as per the conditions of the smart contract, and check the conditions defined earlier, like facilitation, verification, or enforcement. So, what is contract? So, suppose if I have ordered for some uh, uh, mining ores of the diamond, the quality of the diamond, for example, with respect to that, I may be having a smart contract, right? That the our computer program should be able to. Verify whether the supplier is supplying the uh, mining ore of the diamonds as per the agreed contract or not. So to implement such blockchains, we'll be using blockchain 2.0 version for the smart contracts. The third type of blockchain version is blockchain 3.0 called DApps. DApps is an abbreviation of decentralized application. It has their backend code running on a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network. Okay, so uh, can a D app can have front-end code and user interfaces written in any language that may, can make a call to its backend like a traditional apps, blockchain D apps. Okay, now so blockchain variants coming to the blockchain variants, the public blockchain, private blockchain. Mainly we classify the blockchain into public uh, blockchain. It's uh, in this uh, type of blockchain, ledgers are visible to everyone on the internet. It allows anyone to verify and add a block of transaction to the blockchain. Public networks have incentives for people to join and free uh, for use. Anyone can use a public chain network. Private chain is within a single organization. It allows only specific people of the organization to verify and do the transaction blocks. However, the, everyone on the internet is generally allowed to view it. So for example, if a university implements a blockchain to maintain the records of the students, especially the degrees awarded using the blockchain, it will be more secure and it becomes a, a private uh, blockchain. Only the concerned uh, responsible authorized persons like vice chancellor, chancellor, okay, and the uh, registrar, uh, dean, uh, directors, uh, principals, uh, examination section concerned people can only participate uh, in this blockchain. Of course, students can participate, even though it is view visible. The validity of the blocks uh, transactions uh, will be done by only agreed people, only accepted people. <clears throat> now, the deep, there is one uh, architecture here. So blockchain across departments, how we can uh, <clears throat> you know, have the blockchain. So department A, department B, so these are the nodes. And here is one node which uh, renders some services. Here is one node which uh, renders some services. In this blockchain variant, only a group of organization can verify and add transactions. Here the ledger can be open or restricted to, to selected groups. Consortium blockchain is used across across organization. It is only controlled by pre-authorized nodes. <coughs> blockchain uh, use cases. So some of you were asking the examples of the blockchain. A lot of examples of blockchain are available. Blockchain technology is used widely in different uh, sectors, in markets, for billing information, for monitoring and data transfer, right? In supply chain management, so blockchain is used. In government sectors, voting, Proposition P2P bond, decision of documents, IP registration and exchange, intellectual property registration and exchange, tasks, receipt, notary service, and document registry. So, here in the government sectors, uh, the blockchain finds this application. In IoT, agriculture and drone sensor networks are used 
are using the blockchain smart home networks uses the blockchain right so there are many use cases uh, given with respect to the blockchain health so there for the data management purpose big health data stream analytics digital health wallet smart property health token in these cases the blockchain is used so different use cases are given here finance and accounting especially here it is important digital currency payment payment and remittance de cartelized the capital marketing using network of the computer and the blockchain these are the certain things used with respect to the uh, blockchain use cases let's go uh, into certain uh, uh, real time uh, life use cases of the blockchain the dubai one dubai smart city in the year 2016 smart dubai office introduced a blockchain strategy using this technology entrepreneurs and developers will be able to connect with investors and leading companies the objective is to implement blockchain based systems which favors the development of various kinds of industries to make dubai the happiest city in the world okay the second uh, life real life use case of the blockchain is instant customer retention instant is uh, a consumer retention as a service based on the blockchain technology it's a royalty program which based on generating token of or business affiliated with its related network in this system blockchain is exchanged instantaneously and it can be stored in digital portfolios of a users phone or accessing through the browser hello so you are getting understanding blockchain use cases what are the different applications of the blockchain use cases you are getting right i hope you all all of you are listening to the explanation can you tell me one more one important most popular application of the blockchain can anybody type please type the popular application of the blockchain in the chat box Please type the popular application of the blockchain quickly. Hello, Anjan Guru Prasad, you are there. 
Yes, sir. Anjana, if, uh, can you please type the popular application of the blockchain in your chat box? Okay, Bitcoin currency, very good. One more application of the blockchain technology. Sai Kartik. Yes, sir. Please type one application of the blockchain technology uh, apart from this cryptocurrency. Fine. Healthcare, real estate. Good. In a blockchain, suppose there are 50 nodes. If cyber attacker attacker tamper Fifth knot then how many other knots are to be made valid? Please write your answers. In the third box. Write the number quickly. In a blockchain, suppose there are 50 nodes. If you are a cyber attacker, if you are a cyber attacker, tamper fifth node, then how many other nodes are to be made valid? Please write your answer in the chat box. Write the number. Please write your answers quickly. Answers. Answers should come in the chat box.
सूर्य शशांक सूर्य शशांक इज दैट सूर्य शशांक सहादेव कुमार सहादेव कुमार आर यू प्रेजेंट वॉट इज द आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन Sima is there. Sima M from MCA. Sneha from CAC is there. Hello Likita from AC Can you answer you are present or not Yes sir uh, Can you understand this problem Yes sir So what is this problem can you please explain this problem In the block chain, suppose there are fifty nodes. The problem? Can you please explain and give the answer? Chetana from MCA, please write your answer. Sai Kartik, Sai Kartik. Yes, sir. Uh, please write uh, the answer for this question. You understood this question? I got one answer in the chat box. Sai Kartik, uh, do you think uh, what answer given is correct? Yes, yes, sir. Because the hash of one thing is stored in the other block, no, sir. Yes, That's yes. Right. So alternate hashes changes, so the next forty-five will be not working. Yes, our uh, remaining forty-five becomes invalid, and uh, uh, the attacker is supposed to now calculate hash. and even proof of work for remaining 45 nodes yes sir is it correct yes sir okay thank you so i just i have asked uh, uh, to mention one uh, famous application of the bitcoin uh, blockchain that is uh, cryptocurrency most of you may be knowing what is a cryptocurrency as we can say cryptocurrency is one medium of exchange like traditional currencies such as uh, rupee or us dollar but it is designed to exchange digital information through a process made possible by certain principles of cryptography cryptocurrency as you know is a digital currency okay and uh, is classified as a subset of alternative currencies and virtual currencies cryptocurrency is a uh, now it has become like an instrument based on digital cryptography in this kind of cryptocurrency the holder has the currency uh, 
uh, the holder has of the currency has one shape, no other record kept as the identity of the owner in the year 1998. A money, a B money, right? Uh, and an anonymous uh, distributed uh, electronic cash system. The very first, the cryptocurrency world is uh, coined by Wei Jai published. His name is W E I D I. Wei Jai published in 1998 this concept. So, most uh, uh, popular question is what is a Bitcoin and how the blockchain has been uh, have, was evolved. So, Bitcoin was launched in 2009 by an, an unknown person called Satoshi Nakamoto. Bitcoin, uh, even we do not know whether it is his uh, real name or not. So, it, it is only known, uh, not, person is not known, unknown person, but uh, name is known. Bitcoin is a P2P technology which is not governed by any central authority or banks currently issuing bitcoins and managing transactions are carried out collectively in a network it is presently the dominant uh, cryptocurrency of the world it is open source and uh, designed for the general public means nobody wants the control of the bitcoin in fact there are only 21 million bitcoins issued currently bitcoin has a market capital of a uh, uh, dollar to the billion so this is uh, some of the information with the Bitcoin, friends, uh, you need to know some of the information with respect to the Bitcoin. Anyone can uh, use Bitcoin without paying any process fees. If you are handling Bitcoin, the sender and receiver transit directly without using a third party. The blockchain is the technology behind the Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the digital token and blockchain is the ledger that keeps track of who owns the digital tokens. You cannot have Bitcoin without blockchain. You can have blockchain without uh, Bitcoin. That all these things uh, we discussed. Other prominent cryptocurrencies are Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, Ripple, and Litecoin. These are, are the other cryptocurrencies apart from the Bitcoin. Okay, so please remember them. Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, Ripple, and uh, Litecoin. These are, are the other, uh, 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 you know, uh, cryptocurrencies. <coughs> so, so now we'll come to some uh, discussions with respect to the uh, so blockchain versus uh, shared database. So blockchain and uh, shared databases, here you can find the blockchain and uh, here central is just uh, authority which is uh, a data shared uh, database. Okay, so now uh, we'll have quickly the differences or comparison of uh, blockchain to the databases. We uh, blockchain insertion operation we can do but no deletion operation can be done on the blockchain. Shared database, you can create the shared database, you can read, update and delete. All these things uh, can be done on the shared database. Replication, if with respect to the replication parameter, full replication on every P, okay? Uh, that is uh, possible, full replication on every P. Because uh, if you take a distributed peer to peer architecture, a copy of the blockchain is maintained by with every user. But in case of shared database system, master slave and multi master concepts are possible. Consensus algorithm most of the peers agree on the outcome of the transactions. So, in case of shared database, distributed transaction which uh, helped in two phases uh, commit and uh, Taxes, right? So validation, global rules enforced on the world blockchain system offers, uh, in case of shared databases, offers only local integrity constraints, right? Confidentiality in blockchain fully confidential. In case of shared database, not totally uh, confidential. Robustness, fully robust technology 
but in case of shared databases, not entirely robust. These are the, some of the uh, things uh, which gives the comparison of the blockchain to the shared database. Mice about blockchain. It solves every problem. It's a mind in case of a blockchain, right? Trustless technology, secure, and smart contracts are always legal, right? Immutable, need to waste electricity, it is inherently unusable. It's, it's not, it's, it, it solves every problem. Uh, is a mic. Blockchain is also like a database. It can shift trust, also sp spread the trust. It focuses integrity. It focuses on integrity, right? So, so there are some of the things. I will go to the limitations of the blockchain technology. Limitations, as every technology has got limitation, even the blockchain has got the limitation. Higher costs, no seek higher rewards for completing transactions in business which work on the principle of supply and demand. No seek higher rewards for completing the transactions in a business. So this is one uh, limitation. Slower transactions, not prioritize transactions with higher rewards. Backlogs of transactions build up. Smaller ledger is not possible to fully copy of the blockchain potentially, which can affect immutability and costlessness. So it is, even though we say full copy of the blockchain is maintained, it's difficult, right? To maintain a smaller ledger can be maintained. Transaction costs and network speed also matters. Transaction cost of Bitcoin is quite high after being right computed as nearly free for the first five years. Network speed is also important because without internet, the blockchain cannot work. Risk of error involves, there's always risk of error as long as human fun factors is involved in case of a blockchain, blockchain cells as they Database, all the incoming data has to be of high quality. However, a blockchain source, uh, however, the human involvement can quickly resolve the error. It's possible. But the human involvement leads uh, into certain error also. At the same time, uh, with human uh, intervention is required to see the quality of uh, data. Wasteful, every node that runs the blockchain has to maintain consciousness across the blockchain, right? So we think uh, there are uh, many memory cycles, uh, energy cycles are wasted because very low, uh, this offers very low downtime and makes uh, data stored on the blockchain uh, forever uh, unchangeable. However, all this is a wasteful in order to make the, uh, bring the immutability right uh, you have to add a new block for example and uh, a lot of proof of work a lot of computational power will be wasted and if there are thousand uh, nodes and uh, in a blockchain uh, and if there are uh, uh, thousand uh, users then see the computational power involved while uh, creating a new block so there's a waste full of uh, resources, in this, which is a limitations of the blockchain technology. <clears throat> At the end, uh, we'll uh, summarize the entire thing, whatever we studied uh, since morning. A blockchain is a chain of block that contains information. The blockchain is not a Bitcoin, but it is the technology behind Bitcoin. Every block contains hash and every block has a hash of the previous block. 
changes in the content a small change in the content of a block results in the drastical change in the hash that is the outcome of the hash algorithm blockchain requires proof of work below a before a new block is added because if you allow quickly to create a new block it can quickly revalidate all uh, new blocks and further subsequent uh, blocks also so for that purpose blockchain has brought in the concept of proof of work so before a uh, new block is added proof of work has to be executed by a particular block a blockchain database is distributed blockchain is also a database blockchain is a distributed database among uh, multiple peers and it is not centralized actually blockchain technology is resilience decentralized time reducing reliable and it offers unalterable trans transitions there are three versions of the blockchain blockchain 1.0 that is currency blockchain 2.0 for small contracts and blockchain 3.0 for d apps development of apps the blockchain is available in three different variants public private and consortium these are the three variants of the blockchain higher cost slower transactions small ledger the risk of error are some disadvantages of using the blockchain technology we have many use cases of blockchain technology in the real estate it can be used in the smart contracts it can be used in the land registration system it can be used we studied the dubai the smart city case of 2016 instant customer retention system uses the blockchain blockchain for humanitarian humanitarian aid as the some of the real life use cases of the blockchain bitcoin uses the blockchain technology which is not governed by any central authority or bank but uh, cryptocurrencies are said to valid we have to see really how actually it is valid and this uh, is with respect to the basics of uh, blockchain technology hello so this completes uh, basics of blockchain technology before uh, going to explain the blockchain technology use case <clears throat> some more information we need to discuss hello are you available
<coughs> हेलो हेलो आई रिक्वेस्ट ऑल ऑफ यू all the participants please write your full name and Yes, sir. Quickly. Please note that we have not yet demonstrated the blockchain use case. So, since I have to explain some more concepts of the blockchain, and then I will I want to go to the use case for, to practically demonstrate how a project of a, a blockchain can be done. Uh, so, I'll not be doing now. I'll be doing, I shall be scheduling, I request uh, some more time. So what I'll be doing, uh, I will tell you the schedule when I'll be doing. As of now, uh, after this, uh, uh, entry into the chart box from all the participants, then I'll go to uh, some small video and I'll be giving that uh, task Okay. Please be online.
viruses, worms, and trojan. Hello? I request all the participants to watch this video and identify the difference between virus, worms, and trojan hearts. I repeat, I am requesting all the participants to do this small exercise and write in your chart box the difference uh, between virus, worms, and trojan hearts after watching uh, this video. Okay. Hello? Genoses are all malicious programs that can cause damage to your computer, but there are differences among these three. What is a virus? A computer virus attaches itself to a program or file, enabling it to spread from one computer to another, leaving infections as it travels. Like a human. Viruses, worms, and Trojan horses are all malicious programs that can cause damage to your computer, but there are differences among these three. What is a virus? A computer virus attaches itself to a program or file, enabling it to spread from one computer to another, leaving infections as it travels. Like a human virus, a computer virus can range in severity. Some may only cause mildly annoying effects, while others can damage your hardware, software, or files. Almost all viruses are attached to an executable file, which means the virus may exist on your computer, but it actually cannot infect your computer unless you run or open the malicious program. It is important to note that a virus cannot spread without a human action, such as running the infected program. So what is a worm? A worm is similar to a computer virus by design and is considered to be a subclass of virus. <coughs> Worms spread from computer to computer, but unlike virus, it has the capability to travel without any human action. The biggest danger with a worm is its capability to replicate itself on your system. So rather than your computer sending out a single worm, it could send out hundreds or thousands of copies of itself, creating a huge, devastating effect. One example would be for a worm to send out a copy of itself to everyone listed in your email address book. Then the worm replicates and sends itself out to everyone listed in each of the receiver's address book. And the manifest continues on down the line. Due to the copying nature of a worm and its capability to travel across networks, the end result in most cases is that the worm consumes too much system memory or network bandwidth, causing the web servers, network servers, and the individual computers to stop responding. So what is a Trojan horse? The Trojan horse at first glance will appear to be a useful software, but will actually do damage once installed or run on your computer. Those on the receiving end of the Trojan horse are usually tricked into opening them because they appear to be receiving legitimate software or files from a legitimate source. Some Trojans are designed to be annoying, like changing your desktop, adding silly active desktop icons, or they can cause serious damage by deleting files or destroying information on your system. Trojans are also known to create a backdoor on your computer that gives malicious users access to your system, possibly allowing confidential or personal information to be compromised. Unlike viruses and worms, Trojans do not reproduce by infecting other files, nor do they self-replicate. So that's all about viruses, worms, and Trojans. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please write any one difference, difference among 
virus worms and frozen hearts quickly i am requesting all of you and you can also refer if you want once again this uh, youtube video hello Quickly write the difference between among virus, worms, and frozen hearts. Quickly, this is the quick one uh, work. Please do it quickly. No answers. Please answer quickly. It indicates whether you are attentive or not at the side. Good. I got an answer. Prashant, thank you. Sneha. Okay, good answer. Good. Some more answers, please. Hsini from MCA, please write one difference. Sade Kumar, please write a difference. Sima, please write a difference. I hope Likita and Jana are also present and write the differences in the chat box quickly.
hello only two answers what about others okay good good prashant sneha anjana likita prashant reddy mca Prashant Reddy, please write with respect to the Trojan horse also. You have taken only virus and worms to differentiate. Ashan Sini, MCA. Virus and worms, okay. Trojan horse is not present here. Ishaswini, please write with respect to the Trojan horse also. Others quickly write. Getting some response, good. 32 participants are there, 32 responses minimum should be there, right? Can I expect some answer from uh, Subramanya Swarup? Muhammad David, please write your answer. Raksha K. Kumar, write your answer. Aditya, please write your answer. Sputi, write your answer. Good answer from uh, Mehani MC. Godish. Please write your answers. Quickly. I have sent you a link uh, and also I have shown the video. If you could not see the video, at least now you see that video, the link is sent in the chat box. I am just telling uh, those who join now, please write a difference among virus, worms and frozen hearts. Okay, those who answered can uh, uh, leave for today 
and tomorrow regular as with respect to the regular schedule we will be having uh, the class at open short term course class at 10 am tomorrow morning others to consider them for attendance uh, everybody has to answer this question so i am uh, uh, once again informing all the participants to answer these questions i can tell you uh, i have received answer from prashant sneha anjana guru prasad likita prashant reddy yashaswini umahani mca subramanya swarup okay, nidhi murgesh naidu gaurish rachita apurva from others quickly answer within uh, five more minutes after that i will be closing this session and those who are answered can uh, leave the meeting please join tomorrow at uh, 10 am so professor shivkumar from mca department will be demonstrating cyber security tools tomorrow and i want to demonstrate not tomorrow but i will tell you when i will be demonstrating the use case of the blockchain okay so please uh, just go through different concepts what we are discussed uh, today with respect to the blockchain so quickly others has to respond Ashwini, you have not told about the Trojan horse. Pooja K M C A, please uh, send your answer quickly. Purti can take two more minutes and answer. Those who answered can leave the meeting. Join tomorrow at 10 a.m. Have your uh, laptop in place so that you'll be able to do some practical sessions tomorrow. Uja, you have written about worms can be replicated where frozen has cannot be replicated. Correct, sounds correct, but uh, you have not written anything uh, with respect to uh, the virus. While you are differentiating, uh, all these three should come under one line or one thread of differentiating parameter.
good that I received the answer from Spurti. Thank you, Spurti. You can leave the meeting, uh, but please join tomorrow at 10 a.m. Sure, sir. Okay. Surushashank, I'm not having your answer in the chat box. Sinchana, have you answered? Yes, sir. Okay. If you have answered, you can leave the meeting, Ma. You can join tomorrow, 10 a.m. Okay, sir. Okay, Ma. Thank you. Suru Shashank. Strozen has a virus that is uh, placed in a file of, which is used to invade a system. You can say Trozen has is a ma malicious program or a malware, but uh, Trozen has, we won't consider it as a virus, and Trozen has. Okay. Thank you. Ashwini from MCA. Please answer. Sir, I have answered, sir. Ah, okay. Uh, thank you, all of you, for participating very actively. I request all of you to report by 10 a.m. tomorrow for the next session. Okay, sir. Thank you. And uh, tomorrow it is Thursday, right? All of you will be having very useful session tomorrow. Please join. Thank you, one and all.